Hi guys, in case you're not familiar with me, I'm Hunter Bliss and I'm going to make a tutorial today about stock photography. Uh, it's going to be like the most all-encompassing beginner's guide that I can think of inside of what I've learned so far about stock photography. Uh, and why am I doing this? It is because um, I currently study print engineering and Chinese in Stuttgart, Germany, and I think that, or I hope, that I, when I move to China next year, if well, everything goes well with my exams, um, that I could support my life with stock photography, and I, I think it is, I think that's pretty possible. Um, based on the numbers that I've seen so far, and I've been working with stock photography for five or six months, I think that I, with continued work, how I'm going right now, could uh, support a life in a country where the currency isn't so powerful compared to the euro or the dollar. Um, but I can make that even more possible with your referrals. Uh, and for that reason, I would like to teach you everything I have learned so far about stock photography in exchange for your referral if you decide to actually dive into stock photography and uh, make some supplementary income. Um, so yeah, let's get started. In case you don't know what in case you don't know what stock photography is, it looks like this. There are websites on the internet that sell commercial photos like shutterstock.com would probably be the most popular one. Getty Images is also really popular, and through these websites you can upload high quality images that you create, and they are sold by these companies, and through that you can get some passive income, and the great, the great thing about that is that once your pictures are online, they sell licenses to these pictures, and these uh, the pictures stay online forever, and you get a... Uh, you get a small commission on the license that was sold. And my apologies for this terrible teaching style. I'm not a good teacher. I'm a good doer. <laughs> um, so this is what my account looks like by Shutterstock. I can show you my other ones. I personally have Shutterstock, Photolia, Dreamstime, Stock Photos, Big Stock Photos, and iStock Photos. Uh, I would recommend at first to get yourself just the um, just Shutterstock or one platform and try it out and see how you like it because in the end stock photography will become a lot of work uh, and it really will be. It, um, I have I'm, I'm in the middle of exams right now, so I'm not doing as much stock photography, but um, during the semester I was doing stock photography about two days a week. And those days were solid 10-hour days. Um, one was shooting, and then the next day was normally editing the photos. But it works out. And right now is a great demonstration of why stock photography is so practical. Because I am i haven't worked in uh, a week. I just got back from Milan. Uh, I'm from Milan, Italy. And, um, and I've been making money since. It's not a lot, it's like, who knows, like $11, $12 a day, uh, but it's awesome. And uh, I apologize, my whole screen is in German. Um, I do live in Germany. Uh, and you can see this was, uh, this is like my balance. Um, and I will go, I will go into that later. Uh, I do not use the websites for my balances. I, uh, I use a special app that lets me keep track of all the platforms that I use at the same time it's very useful but basically this is what it will look like when you have established your stock prof your stock profile um, what else another thing I would like to show you is exactly what it means to uh, work in stock photography for this long and I when I originally started I had just uploaded the travel photos that I had taken when I was working at this other company. Uh, that was actually how I got started in photography. I started working for this company that sent me around Germany. 
and I had some amazing pictures, little technical skill in my actual capturing of the photos, but I thought that I could make some money from these photos because I had, knew, I had known about stock photography and it had gone this far and as I had gone further into the process I started dating my, sh my shoots which were basically me just walking around in my local area and taking shots of things that I found interesting or maybe uh, useful for commercial purposes stuff like this and once I really got going maybe two months into it I realized that I needed some serious photos so once a week I went out and uh, I still do it oh, just not right now because of exams um, I come up with some sort of creative shoot idea and I capture all of these photos and then I upload them to my stock platforms but this is what it looks like to have a decent collection um, I'm not really sure how many it is but the number that you may have seen by Shutterstock which was only a thousand or so is a uh, a small percentage of the actual photos that I took because Shutterstock has high requirements, high expectations from the photos that you upload and that uh, yeah does does really cut down on the photos that are really ex are actually accepted uh, and once once you get further into the stock uh, uploading and you get used to the to the expectations that they have of the photos your approval rate actually goes up. I've noticed that most of the photos that I submit now are approved, but only because I became more familiar with Lightroom. Um, with my camera itself, that's that's very important. And uh, yeah, so that's that's so much so much I would say to um, what a library would look like and kind of how I built my library of photos as a student and not a full-time stock photographer but let's get into the next part so you have your library of edited images and I'm going to assume that you know how to edit an image uh, I can create a, tor a tutorial later if there's need for that about how to edit images but since this is about stock uh, photography I'm going to stick purely to what I think is relevant to be, being successful in stock photography, or at least uh, successful as I have been. Um, so you have your images here, and if you're not familiar with metadata, metadata is a standard of information that is added to the behind the scenes of the image. Uh, it's not You don't see it in the image, but it's in the digital file itself, and it will automatically tell stock websites how to tag the images, how to title the images, how to give them uh, subtitles or captions. Um, this is all very, very important that uh, for the search engine optimization of your images uh, and letting your images be found by certain stock platforms. And in this case, uh, we have, for example, an airplane wing flying over a city uh, pretty neat image uh, we can before before we export these images while we're still editing the metadata which is relevant for the for the stock uploading we can go into Shutterstock the not your not your your account but you can go to the Shutterstock website and type in I don't know like travel plane really really vague concepts that would probably result in a huge number of, uh, of images. So you, t you type that in the search box and you order them by popularity and you'll find images like this one for example that is s uh, somewhat similar to the one I created. You can click on that and when it loads you can find what kind of title, what, how your title might look like um, because perhaps this title has words in it which are very often searched which is why it's one of the most popular images. It's a great image anyways. Um, and you can go down to keywords and find 
uh, of course, the, the keywords, and I think the keywords in this case are even more important than the title itself, so uh, a lot of times I'll go and I'll look at these keywords, I'll consider what are relevant to my image, or honestly, um, if the image is relevant enough, it Shutterstock really won't notice the difference, and I can just copy at least those keywords into my into the metadata of my images here when I add a title and keywords. Uh, a lot of the times, which I find astonishing, is how few keywords there are and how successful a certain image is. But sure, you can add up to 50 keywords to your image as long as you have some relevant keywords that are enhanced by by these certain keywords. And I think this tip here is pretty useful because I didn't start doing this until like a month and a half ago. And it really does in, um, increase how often your images are found. Um, yeah, so I would say that much to, uh, to describing your images and creating metadata for your images because that is probably one of the most important parts. Um, yeah. Edit your images so that they are crisp, standard, nobody's going to complain, um, and Shutterstock will most likely accept them. And that's that's about that. Uh, the next part, I'll show you how you can upload your images to uh, stock websites, so let's do that. So nothing really changed because uh, it's just the magic of video. Um, I added the metadata to my photos and I exported them and these photos for example it's a hundred photos almost uh, these are already uploaded but to upload these photos I would not of course use the the in browser uploader that's available on Shutterstock or most stock websites they will allow you to upload a batch of maybe five images while you search individually for each image double click on them and add them to the to the uploader uh, that is far too slow for me, um, but it does still work with the with the metadata and all of the titles and tags are added automatically. But the better option is to use an FTP uploader, uh, and this is assuming that you have pretty large batches of images. But I would use an FTP uploader like FileZilla. Uh, FileZilla is basically works like this. Uh, Shutterstock is going to give you uh, an address that you're going to connect to, the port you're going to connect to and sometimes depending on what platform you just have to enter your normal username and password you configure this connection and you can connect to the shutterstock ftp uploader which will allow you to upload all 100 images in one batch and put them in down here in this queue which makes it much simpler to upload huge numbers of images i mean sometimes if i have a really productive shoot i could be uploading maybe 600 images in one night because i have six different platforms or even more than that and at this point it will take a while uh, to upload 600 images that are pretty high resolution um, so yeah you're gonna want to go get a coffee or whatever you do I uh, I just do regular person stuff while I wait for that um, and then that's uploaded and you will go back to your Shutterstock account, not this website obviously, um, and you will, oh man, well it's in, it's in German, but in English it's going to say, uh, I don't know what it's going to say, but it's going to be the second button <laughs> right here after upload. Sorry about that, my camera died thanks to these, uh, I like to keep my camera light so I have I had a really small battery in there, it was just 800 milliamp hours. And they, they die really fast. Um, so anyways, you will go down to this thing like Bilder and in this in this case I don't have any photos that are waiting but you're gonna get a small uh, rectangle with the title, the keywords, and the categories and it's necessary by every stock site that you add categories um, to your images so that they can organize your images and then you will submit the images. Uh, well, you, I should also say you could upload if your images have people's faces or um, uh, brands in them. Uh, I'll give you like a really good example of an image Hold on. Uh, that would need this sort of classification. 
uh, this image right here, if you can see it, has a lot of people in it. And since it's high resolution, all of them are probably recognizable. And because they're all recognizable, you'd have to upload this image as an editorial image. Um, and that basically just means that you would add information like the date and the, the season, what's going on in the picture, what makes it maybe newsworthy. And then in Shutterstock, you would choose uh, the editorial classification, and then it would be sorted as editorial. Uh, the same thing goes for really uh, private buildings, like homes. If you were a real estate photographer and you take images of the inside of homes, which could also still be successful on stock photography websites, um, you would either need a release that you can download at Shutterstock, and the Shutterstock release is valid across all websites that I have used so far. Uh, maybe I can tell you about an app that also has good releases. You would need a legal release for either private property or someone's identity. Uh, private property with a release, you could upload it without having it as an editorial classification. And uh, the same goes for people. But if you don't upload it as an editorial image because you don't have a release, uh, or because you do have a release, um, that can be used for private purposes, uh, which is always good even though in my experience talking to graphic designers and having worked as a graphic designer for a while I don't think that graphic designers just use editorial images for news purposes. I do often see editorial images being used for commercial purposes which is actually not allowed but it happens and I'm not responsible for um, for anyone who misuses my images. Uh, but yeah that's basically the, the jib about um, about editorial images and their classification here at Shutterstock, for example. Um, otherwise, once those are all categorized, you would click on select all and submit them. Um, you can also, uh, I don't know if I could show you a good example. No. You would, uh, you can also select them in batches and edit the categories that way. That way, one category is applied to many images, and that can save you a lot of time. That's something I did not do in the beginning, but that I would recommend that people do. Um, yeah, what else? For iStock, you are going to need a different uploading mechanism uh, because the iStock approval system really sucks, to be honest. It really does. So I have to use this, uh, this program called Deep Meta. Uh, and I'll show you what that looks like, uh, but my screen recorder is acting up, so one second. So this program is called DeepMeta, and it will allow you to upload your images to iStock. Uh, the really cool thing about this program is that it will automatically select categories for you. Uh, it doesn't always do that, but it does make the categorization part of the stock upload way easier. Um, and for this, you would just click on like add new files, add all your files and then they would show up in this upload part and here I can show you for example so these these three images won't upload because they are a strange format I don't I don't really know why it's just annoying um, and here as you can see I classified it as an editorial it's the wrong country actually uh, said so, something said that to Italy um, and the categories here were uh, automatically chosen which is really cool. Um, and then you would do that with every images and every image and unfortunately here you can't edit them in batch in batches. So you have to edit the categories of each individual image. And then you would put all of the images over onto this side, start the uploads, and of course you have a long time to wait again. Um, the in my experience, the bad thing about iStock, although they do approve your images in huge batches. Uh, which makes me think that somebody is sitting at a computer looking at my images for a long time. But in order for them to get to your images in this weird cycle of approval that they have for all of their authors, um, it takes quite a long time. Uh, right now it just says I have 12 unfinished photos in my, in my queue, but that was uh, 
a few days ago that was a little more than 300. Um, so it takes a really long time for them to approve your images. Um, but when they do, they do, so I can't complain too much about that. Um, yeah, I think that's all you need to know about Deep Meta. Um, so, I don't know if you've noticed, but this guide has been very freestyle. And I did not take a shower for this, and I'm still in my pajamas. And it's just a regular Wednesday. Uh, I've just been studying all day, but I felt like making this. Um, but two extra tips that I think are very helpful for any aspiring stock photographers. And that is um, apps. The apps that I use to monitor my... my stock activity uh no you can't see it i don't want to focus right this app right here this icon you recognize it if you download it it's called micro stalker and i'll add a text there to explain exactly how that's pronounced or how that's how that's written so you can download it uh, and it will allow you to keep track at the same time of all of your stock websites which is really cool show you again looks like this um, really useful tool uh, you're gonna need that if you want to do stock photography efficiently uh, because I personally do not like logging into all my platforms one at a time just to see the number that doesn't give me an idea of how much I'm making um, and another very uh, very useful app is called easy release and like I was talking about releases earlier uh, this app is not affiliated with Shutterstock, but it does create releases on your phone. Uh, you know, like a bunch of criteria here. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna keep showing you up close. Um, uh, it does give you uh, all of the same criteria that you would have in a Shutterstock model release, uh, and these are very mobile. And you can make one with your model on the go. Uh, and um, yeah, then you can submit that. I think it's compatible with all the stock websites that I had mentioned, uh, plus some. Um, very useful app in that regard. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I think that's, um, I think that's pretty much about it for our apps and stock photography. Uh, those two apps are pretty useful. Wish I would have known about them in the beginning. Did not, but now you know because you're watching this guide. So finally to conclude this video, I should probably talk about the serious side of stock photography. It's feasibility, um, why I like it so much it, compared to other branches of photography and how successful you could aim to be, which I think if you use this guide, you probably will avoid a lot of troubles that I had early on, which I did by watching other guides from people uh, that I'm now, uh, what's the word putting, uh, expanding upon. Um, so each month, after about five months, I, last month for example, I made like $290 which was almost, well, uh, which was almost enough to pay my rent, uh, just purely, not, no groceries or anything like that. Um, thanks to the savings that I had from the previous month, it was actually more than enough to pay my rent for that month um, and, and, and some. But I don't think that stock photography is something that someone without financial aid or help from the family uh, could just do because it's not instant it's very slow and that is something that you really have to um, yeah, accept about stock photography if you are working as a photographer already it's a pretty excellent way to make some supplemental income because once you have the photos uploaded they make money for I'm still I'm still making money on the photos that I originally uploaded a long time ago which is uh, that's fantastic um, but I really like stock photography one because I think for myself in a country like China or like most countries and you, you notice this on Shutterstock there are a lot of there are a lot of um, 
Asian authors on Shutterstock because you live in a country like Thailand, China. Um, a lot of these places are, it, it's still feasible there to live entirely from stock photography. Uh, it would be feasible in Germany as well, assuming you, assuming you wanted like 2,000 euros a month, uh, that would also be possible, but you would need to work a lot. It would be a full-time job, definitely. Um, and maybe sometimes not the most enjoyable because some of the, some of the more sellable photos are also some of the most robotic and they don't require that much creativity. Um, and sometimes you can find yourself on a, on a weekday just taking pictures of something very boring. I'm not gonna, not gonna say, uh, I'm not gonna give away my secret in that regard. Um, taking pictures of something very boring a lot of times and uh, it, it works. Companies need that kind of stuff. Uh, but it is possible, but I, yeah, I, w I would recommend it for, uh, I wouldn't recommend it for someone who um, is really looking for a branch to get started working in and see an immediate pay. It's not like you get hired for a job and you immediately get a payroll automatically. That's a certain defined amount. Um, stock photography, you do that as a way you put into it, but at a very slow um, Einstieg, like the, the, the entry into it is very slow. Um, but having said that, I love stock photography for its flexibility. Uh, like I had mentioned before, I haven't worked in uh, a week or two and the money is still coming in very reliably. Uh, and that is one thing that, uh, one part of the reputation of stock photography that it is quite reliable and that it has been very reliable so far. Um, but it especially allows me to be as creative as I want. I worked as a, I, I've done wedding photography, I've done real estate photography, which I still really like, um, but wedding photography is for me a nightmare. Um, photographing people and working under, perhaps not under a contract with people, there's a lot of pressure and um, it is a real pain in the butt when, uh, when the two parties disagree with each other. Uh, it, the pay is the pay is really nice. I always say the pay for wedding photography is uh, almost like a cheat code, uh, <laughs> but it's not. It's it, it it is compensated by the incredibly hard work you have to do and the lack of enjoyment that I personally have at wedding photography. Uh, so stock photography in this way is the best in my opinion, um, and you know the. Over the past five months, I have built up an inventory that is slowly allowing me to do something like pay my rent, um, and that is fantastic. And it's only, it seems to only be developing and growing, and uh, that's what I hope it does for you when watching this guide, or if you're finished with it. And uh, yeah, otherwise. Um, the, the final advice I would give is don't give up because it takes a long time. Have patience. Uh, it is difficult, especially if you're a student of the, a, a young student of the new generation. Don't much patience, but you will need a few months. Uh, very satisfying when you get your first, when you get your first few sales, and that that will happen, uh, especially with Shutterstock. Shutterstock is so efficient and all, uh, and I showed that. Um, but. Uh, I wish you luck.